Hi, everyone. My name is Cy Venom, and I'm with the IBM Cloud team. Today, we want to talk about container orchestration. Know that in the past, we've talked about containerization technology, as well as dived into Kubernetes as an orchestration platform. But let's take a step back and talk about why container orchestration was necessary in the first place. We'll start with an example. Say that we've got three different microservices that have already been containerized. We've got the front end, we'll have the back end, as well as a database access service. These three services will be working together and are also exposed to end users so they can access that application. A developer has a very focused look at this layout, right? So they're thinking about the end user, the end user accessing that front end application, that front end which relies on that back end, which may in turn store things using the database service. A developer is focused entirely on this layer. Underneath it, we've got a orchestration layer. So we can call that a master. And I'm thinking about Kubernetes right now, uh, where you would have something like a master node that manages the various applications running on your compute resources. But again, you know, a developer has a very singular focused look at this layout, and they're really only looking at this stack right here. They're thinking about the specific containers and what's happening within them. Within those containers, there's a few key things. So there's going to be the application itself. There's also going to be things like the operating system, as well as dependencies. And there's going to be a number of other things that you define, but all of those things are contained within those containers themselves. An operations team has a much larger view of the world. They're looking at the entire stack. So an operations team, there's a number of things that they need to focus on, but we'll use this side to kind of explain how they work with deploying an application that's made up of multiple services. So first, we'll talk about deploying. So taking a look here, it's very similar to over here, but the key difference is these are no longer containers, but the actual compute resource. So these can be things like VMs, um, or in the Kubernetes world, we call these worker nodes. So each one of these would be an actual compute worker node. So, you know, it could be something like four vCPUs with eight gigabytes of RAM uh, per each one of these different um, boxes that we have laid out here. So first thing you would use an orchestration platform to do is something simple, just deploying out an application. Let's say that we start with a single node. And again, you know, here we've got the master. On that single node, we'll deploy three different uh, microservices, one instance each. So we'll start with the front end. We'll have the back end, as well as the database access service. Already, let's assume that you know we've consumed a good bit of the compute resources that are available on that worker node. So we realize let's add additional worker nodes to our master and start scheduling out and scaling our application. So that's the next piece of the puzzle. The next thing an orchestration platform cares about is scaling an app out. So let's say that we want to scale out the front end twice. Uh, the back end will scale it out three times. And the database access service, let's say we scale this one out three times as well. So a orchestration platform will schedule out our different um, microservices and containers to make sure that we utilize the compute resource in the best possible way. It's one of the key things that an orchestration platform does is scheduling. Next, we need to talk about networking and how we enable other people to access those services. It's the third thing that we can do with an orchestration platform. So that includes creating things like services that represent each of our individual containers. So the problem um, without having something like an orchestration platform take care of this for you, you would have to create your own load balancers. In addition, you would have to manage your own services 
and service discovery as well. So by, by that basically I mean, so if these services need to talk to one another, they're not going to try to find the IP addresses of each different container and resolve those, see if they're running. That's something the orchestration platform needs to do, is handle that system around it. So with this, we have the ability to expose singular points of access for each of those services. And again, very similarly, you know, an end user might access that front-end application, so the orchestration platform would expose that service to the world while keeping these services internal where the front end can access the back end and the back end can access that database. So let's say that that's the third thing that um, an orchestration platform will do for you. The last thing I want to highlight here is Insight. Insight is very important when working with an application in production. So, you know, developers are focused on the applications themselves but let's say that one of these uh, pods accidentally goes down, right? So what the orchestration platform will do is it'll rapidly bring up another one and bring it within the purview of that service. It'll do that for you automatically. In addition, an orchestration platform has a number of pluggable points where you can use key open source technologies, things like Prometheus and Istio, plug in directly into the platform and expose capabilities that let you do things like logging, analytics, and you know, there's even a cool one, something that I want to sketch out here, the ability to see the entire service mesh. So many times you might want to lay out all of the different microservices that you have and see how they communicate with one another. In this example, it's fairly straightforward, but let's go through the exercise anyway. So we've got our end user. And that end user would likely be accessing the front end application. And we've got the two other services as well, the database as well as the back end. In this particular example, I'll admit, we have a very simple service mesh. We've only got three services. But seeing a look at how they communicate with one another can still be very valuable. So user access the front end, the front end access the back end, we expect the back end to access the database. But let's say the operations team finds that, oh, actually sometimes the front end is directly accessing the database service. And they can see how often as well, with things like a service mesh, you get insight into things like the operations per second. Let's say the every time, or let's say there's five operations per second hitting the front end, maybe eight that go to the back end, maybe three that go per second to the, uh, the database service, but then 0.5 requests per second going from the front end to the database service. And we've identified, you know, by the operations team has identified by taking a look at the requests and, and, and tracing them through the different services that here's where the issue is. This is a simple example about how you can use something uh, like Istio and Kiali, uh, which is a key service meshing capability, um, to see insight into your running services. Orchestration uh, platforms have a number of capabilities that they need to support, and this is why operations teams and, and these roles that we're seeing pop up, things like SREs, Site Reliability Engineers, um, and, and we're seeing the growth of those roles because there's a lot of things to concern um, that, that they need to concern themselves with when running an application in production. Developers see a very singular view of the world where they're focusing on the things within the containers themselves. Thanks for joining me for this quick overview of container orchestration technology. If you like this video, be sure to drop a comment below or leave us any feedback and we'll get back to you. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos in the future. Thank you.